Jackie, why don't you tell me what's going on? You know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where to turn. I don't know who to trust. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know. I'm feeling frustrated, upset. What would you like to see Tired. happen? I'd like to see, I'd like to see where me and Marcus used to be. I'd like to see us having fun and, and being happy, that's all. You know, I didn't find, I don't find anything wrong with being happy. That's where I want to be. What do you think it would take for your marriage to return to those times? It would t probably take a little bit, uh, a little bit more of my patience. Mm. You know, a little bit more of me being patient, a little bit more of me being understanding of um, what he's going through. Have you been understanding so far? I've tried. At times, it's difficult. You know. And what do you think uh, Marcus needs to do? What do you mean? What, do what does he need to do to make this marriage better? He needs to, well, for, for me, he, he seems to be doing what um, a man does. He's supplying for the household. He's, um, he's involved in the church. He's, he's just doing what men do. Jackie, why are you in the hospital? I had an accident. Tell me about that. Um, Marcus and I were having a, a, a discussion, a misunderstanding, and he, he, he tried to grab me and I pulled away and I hurt my arm. And that's what happened. How did you hurt your arm? I, I, hurt, my, I hurt my arm because me and my husband had a, a, a fight. I just want to make sure I'm hearing you. You broke your own arm? No. I'm saying that it, I'm saying that it, that Marcus and I had an argument and that I pulled away. I'm saying that both of us had something to do with it. I've already talked to some people about what happened to my arm. So now it's just a matter of me going home and being, you know, with my husband. I'm just trying to figure out what I can do now. Mm -hmm. Being a, a, a Christian woman within this world of my Bible and stay righteous. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. My arm is going to be fine. My husband is going to be fine. I'm going to be fine as long as we keep in the path of what the rules are that we need to go through in the Bible. When do you go home? As soon as I'm finished talking with you. They told me at the front desk that they were holding you over for observations that they think you may have. Yeah, but I don't have to. I don't have to stay for that. That's that's ridiculous. I don't have any head trauma or head injuries or anything. I bumped my head, and that's 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 enough. That that's all they need to know. How did you bump your head? I fell. How did you fall? I fell backwards. I f I fell. You were standing up, and you just fell over. Exactly. You have problems with your equilibrium? Jackie, I want to help you. But we have to begin with truth. You have to begin by telling truth, first of all, to yourself. Before we start talking about how you can be a good Christian or a good wife, we first have to see how we can keep you alive and healthy. There's nothing wrong with wanting a, a great marriage and a wonderful life. But you can't have that without truth. And you can't have that without health. You have to be healthy. I think I'm fine. You think you're fine? Mm -hmm. Even though you're in the hospital with a broken arm and possibly a concussion? But you know, that's not my fault then. If that's, you know, that's, that's not my fault. I agree. It's not your fault. Can you tell me whose fault it is? It's, 
it's society's fault. It's God's fault. It's Marcus's fault. It's my fault. It's everybody's fault. Any, it, it's everybody's fault. If I can start by being the, the one to make the initiative to apologize and say that this is my fault and how do I change it, then I'm starting something. Well, I like that it's everybody's fault premise. Let's go with that. And so if you have some fault and maybe God has some fault and maybe Marcus has some fault and maybe the community has some fault, let's just focus on right now then how you can be more responsible for your actions. Because you can't make Marcus do anything. But you are responsible for you. Your life is a gift from God. You are called to be a good stewardship of your life first and foremost. That's where your first responsibility comes in. I love my husband and I, there's nothing that is going to make us divorce. There's all this thing about, you know, people coming in and advising me about this and that, as if nobody has issues in their life, mm -hmm. as if nobody's ever been, as if I'm the only woman or the only man that comes in here that has been, that, that, that has, has had a, a, an altercation. What if we don't have to go to that extreme? What if we're not even talking about divorce? I know that's not what I want to talk about. That's not why I'm here. I only talk, want to talk about you being healthy and whole. That's all I'm asking you to think about and talk about. I don't know what to do to be healthy and whole. I've tried. I've, went to, I've gone to church. I've been a wife, and I've been a good, uh, um, I've been a good person within the church. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else to do. I, I do my work. I come home. I cook for my husband. And now it's at a point where, yes, I get frustrated, but every corner that I turn is another corner to turn, and I run into blocks. And right now I'm at a block. I don't know what to do. I don't know the other course to go if divorce is not the answer, but I don't want to divorce my husband. Mm -hmm. I think that he can change. Well, I agree, and I want to acknowledge that you are at a very difficult impasse in your life. I, I want to affirm that. Then what? Then what? Then what's the what's the other alternative? I think that you should start thinking about first of all, what do you want for you? Not you and Marcus, but in terms of you being healthy and whole. You said you want to focus on righteous. How do you become righteous now? What does righteousness look like in your life? And I guess I want to challenge you to th to think about righteousness or holiness as a way in which you take care of your life, a way in which you offer yourself to God. The scripture says that know ye not ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you are the new tabernacle. You, you are the place where God dwells. God's spirit lives in you. It is God that makes you holy. It is God that makes you righteous. All you simply have to do is receive that. And anybody that comes at you not willing to treat you in that way, you don't have to tolerate it. And the righteousness that you seek is there on that path. If I turn my back on my husband, society is going to do the same thing. I'm the only thing that he has, just like he's the only thing that I have. We are married. We, are, we have each other, and that's complete. Anything else is incompletion. And how are we going to change society if we don't change within ourselves? And who's going to help him? There's lots of help out there for your husband, but really, Jackie, this is about you. You can't help Marcus. How come I can't? You can only help you. Marcus is a human being with his own free will. He makes his choices. You can't change his choices. If you could change his choices, we wouldn't be sitting, wouldn't be sitting here today. You, you honestly believe that you can't change people's choices? Absolutely. Do you think that you can change Marcus's choices? How many years have you been married? We've been married 10 years. And how many incidents have you had? I don't know. I don't, I don't keep track of incidents. Too, too many. If he wants to be different, if he wants to be a better husband, if he wants to love you as Christ loves the church, then he will want to change and he will seek change. 
But if but, nobody is, this is what I'm saying, if nobody is steering him in that direction, if I can't, I've had discussions with my husband on a lot of times and no one keeps, you know, I, I can't keep account of those just as I can't keep account of the incidences that happen. So now we have a, a, a man who doesn't get any spoke, he doesn't get any, 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 any attention or any love who will then be looked at as a black man who just beats his wife and he doesn't care about, you know, um, of anything, he's violent, he's a hypocrite, he goes to church, but yet he beats his wife. And now we have this 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 black woman who who um, is now going to look for assistance from 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 the state because you know she wasn't strong enough to stand up to him, and that's just how you know j just how they are. They can't keep a relationship. All of these things are things that he understands and that I understand, and we try to get past those judgments, but I need someone to help me and my husband and our marriage. Not just me. I agree. And there are people out there to help your husband. I just want you to know that you are not one of them. Then I don't. All of those things are true. All those stereotypes are out there. Oh. All those struggles are there. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And I understand your desire to want to protect one more black man. I understand your desire to want to escape one more stereotype for the black woman. I understand all of that. But none of that brings you to where you said you want to be, which is on a path of righteousness. I'm only saying what you said. You want to find out how do you get on the path of righteousness. And by sacrificing yourself, I don't care how much you give of yourself, you are not going to change Marcus, nor are you going to save him, nor are you going to protect him. You can't. I love my husband. Mm -hmm. And if it means I have to go through a, a couple of bumps and bruises, then that's all right. I don't see anything that much different from what I'm doing than what, 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 what Christ did when he went into the temple. He didn't just leave and say all of these people are full of sin and therefore Father let them die. He had to make them see within themselves what they were doing wrong. And as a wife, shouldn't I be allowed to do that? I understand you wanting to give all that you have to help your husband and to help your marriage. I understand that. I understand that you feel you have all the strength and everything that you need right inside you to make the changes in your husband and your marriage that you all need. I understand that. But the truth is, you don't. Christ, Jesus, is God. He had all the right stuff. When he went to the cross, he said, it is finished. This is the final sacrifice. There will be no more. No more violence. No more abuse. No more oppression, no more racism, no more sexism. He says the kingdom of God is now, and it's a place of love and of peace and mutuality. You don't have the power that Christ had. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that how do you then teach people how did they, you then teach people the love and the understanding and, and no more racism and no more no sexism? How do you teach that if you constantly run away? We can teach you and we can teach your husband. You can't teach him by staying. The longer you stay in the relationship, he never has to face it. He never has to tell himself the truth. He never has to admit his sin as long as you keep covering it up and taking responsibility for it. I've been trying to maintain a marriage. Baby, you don't have a marriage. A marriage is where two people submit to one another, where there is mutuality, where Christ is at the center. So what are you saying then, that I should just, you know, tell the people that are in my church they're, they're all wrong, that um, I shouldn't be a good wife and I shouldn't submit to my husband and I shouldn't, you know, do all the things that I've been doing, that I've been wrong all this time? What I'm saying to you is that God does not hold the sanctity of marriage over the sanctity of life. And anybody that would tell you to stay in a marriage that puts your life in jeopardy is wrong. 
and everything I, I, I've ever learned is wrong, so now I have to, okay. I'm not saying to give up hope on your marriage. I'm not saying that you need to stop loving your husband. You can still love and care for your husband, but if living in the same environment with him puts your life at risk, you are not helping yourself, nor are you helping him. But he's sorry. I'm you sure know, he's he out is. there now. He brought me everything that I need in order to, to, to go home and he had flowers for me. You know, he's sorry and I understand why he's sorry. Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen all the time. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how to prevent it to ha from happening again. You can't. You can't prevent it. It's not in your power. It's only in his power. He decides whether or not he will hurt you. I don't know even where to go. I mean, I've talked to several people at church. Mm -hmm. I've talked to um, Miss Jones, who I sit next to. She's like 86. But she tells me that, you know, that the business of a marriage belongs within that marriage. A lot of times, you know, people, they, they want to close, you know, they want to close their ears when we have the women's prayer meeting. You know, people say, well, we're not here to talk about that, those type of things. Mm -hmm. And that's where I grew up. That's what I know. And if I can't talk to the people that I know who are supposedly there for me, then I don't want to, and I don't, I don't know how to go outside of that. I mean, I didn't talk to the nurse, but I'm talking to you. I really am. Um Sorry that the church hasn't been what it should be to you. And I know that in the black church, we do have a lot to live up to as women. And I apologize that it's put you, rather than liberating you, it's actually held you in prison, held you hostage in a violent environment. It's not every church. And if your pastor or in your church is not willing to hear your story and believe your story and support you, then as difficult as that may be, you will need to find a new community rather than die in that one. I don't know what's, I don't know what he'll do. You're right. He doesn't have anybody in this corner. He doesn't have anybody to, to save him, so to say. But you don't know that. He hasn't had to look for help because you haven't held him accountable. And just as the church hasn't held him accountable and they close their eyes, so have you. But you can be the first. You can be the first to say to him, no more. I want, I, I, I want so much to, to forgive my actions as much as I want to forgive my husband's actions. I mean, they tell me they, that, that, that forgiveness is next to godliness, and I'm trying to be as close as I can to that, but I don't, right now I'm not feeling very forgiving, but I know that that's the right thing to do, to forgive him, and for him to forgive me for whatever I've done, and then that way we can move on. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how I don't know. I don't know anymore. What's well, a little premature? Know. It's a little premature to talk about forgiveness right now. But surely the time will come when you will be able to forgive. But don't confuse forgiveness with restoration. You will be able to forgive one day, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he will be restored to the same place in your life. But I'm, that's what I'm supposed to do as a wife, forgive, and that's, what I'm, that's, that's, that's the duty for either one of us to forgive and then move on. Mm -hmm. If you continue to, to stay in the same position and not forgive, then you can't move on. You're just holding all of those things in, which gets to escalate and then gets worse. Yes, and, and, and there are some things that will have to happen first in order for forgiveness to be real and genuine and authentic. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. So you don't have to forgive him today. You don't even have to worry about forgiveness today. 
Forgiveness will come in time when the process is complete. Right now, what you need is to reconnect your faith. You said you, you don't know who to trust, what to trust, what to believe. The most important thing now is for us to help you reconnect with God, to know that God doesn't stand outside of your circumstances, that in the midst of everything that's happened, God has been right here with you, calling you to something more and to something better. And that God is here with you even now to give you all the strength and the courage that you need to make the best choices for your life.